today's video we're going to be talking basic chipping ideas i'm basing these on the backbone of me being someone who struggled with my chipping in recent years to now having it starting to trend in a much more positive way i'm going to share with you what i've done the basic ideas to improve my short game that hopefully you can use to help you get more of a, a, a usable solid short game i've paired up with today's golfer magazine in a set of videos this being the first one on the basic ideas you need to try and build a decent short game now if you want to win a set of wedges from today's video all you need to do is hit the link down below follow the this uh, in the description hit that link follow out the old form and you can enter while at the same time you've got to be subscribed to this channel make sure you hit the thumbs up button on this video as well as posting a comment in that comment section down below let me know is your basic chip in is it good or bad in that comment section you could be winning a set of wedges So your basic setup that's going to allow you to chip in this position um, let's forget what obstacles we've got in front of us the series will go on to talk about more specialized chipping but this is like a fairway shot a fringe shot medium bear to slightly fluffy lie so a big array of the chip shots you will use i'd be using these basic setup ideas so start with the holding of the club i want you to use your normal grip but i want you to play with where you hold it on the handle so i'm going to come from medium length chip into the middle of the golf grip so i'm using the length of the club shortening it to help me control the speeds I put in, which allow me to control the distance that comes out. If I was much closer, I might come down a little bit more the handle. So I'm very rarely, if ever, holding anywhere near the top of the club. I'm gonna be pushing my hands down that handle just to help me control length of swings and speeds. It's all in there for a little bit of feel for distance. So make sure you are playing with your hold up and down the handle. Now, the biggest breakthrough key for me is really trying to make sure I'm using the back and bottom of the club more and get away from trying to dig anything in with this sharp leading edge. Traditionally, I was an old school ball back in my stance, handle forward, hinge and hold chipper. Now, if you're someone who chips this way and you chip well, keep doing it. But what I find I've had massive breakthrough with students and obviously for myself as well, by making the shaft angle more neutral, so taking away any shaft lean, so lining up what I feel the grip with the middle of the head, so the middle of the face a lot more, then in turn lining those up with the middle of my body, this straight connection is what's allowing me to get that club to come through and hit much more neutrally on the ground, giving me a bigger room for error on strike and allowing my uh, chipping to become more consistent and it absolutely can for students and people watching this video so let's get the ball in line with my zipper here so in line with the middle of my body now at the same time i'm going to make sure that handles lining up more with the middle of my body i've come down the grip i've also got a slightly wider stance than i would have used to have i would have been much more feet close together ball back handle forward open stance i am now a fraction open to target but hardly at all i'm straighter on with my feet like a regular shot and i've got a width for stance somewhere between kind of around my hip waist what this allows me to do is get a good amount of turn with my body try and get that body turn pushing that ball forwards which we'll come to in the swing but from a narrow stance it's making me get a little bit jabby feeling with my knees which is what i see a lot of students do which is where they start bottoming out early um, and they start crashing that club into the ground, duffing, thinning, fatting, those kind of ideas. So it's really, everything is built around this straight line and now I'm gonna try and introduce plenty of turn with my body because the premise of this shot is I wanna be striking it again in a pretty straight line. I want that club hitting the ground, pretty level on the floor with the bottom end. I wanna use the bounce on this club, use this back end. I don't wanna be introducing that front leading edge that will dig so hands middle of the grip medium width for stance got my straight lines flowing i also have a little bit of turnout in my lead foot again this is just going to help me turn through a little bit more and all i'm going to do from here is i'm going to turn away to the target and i'm going to turn through to the target just to try and chip that ball out in front of me Ooh, nearly went in now what you're going to notice when i hit these shots is this ground hopefully is barely going to be offended, moved, no divots. This is a relatively tight fringe. And what's happening is I'm brushing it, but 
but I am not moving earth. And that's because from this straight aligned up position, when my club is interacting with the ground, it's so much shallower for so much longer. And it's using this rounded, unoffensive, base of the club. Now I'm using my 52 degree wedge. We'll come to wedges a bit more, which ones to use situations, but I could use this with a nine iron run, seven iron run, 58 degree going high shot, same technique. I'm gonna use the loft subject to how I want that ball to roll out, which we'll come to. So medium whip stance, nice and straight with the angle of the shaft, middle of the grip. And the only other thing I might just slightly play with is how high or low my hands get. If I'm feeling a little nervy, I'll just raise my hands a little bit, stand a little bit taller, and that then in turn makes the interaction with that ground even less offensive because I start using that cutaway toe part, which has no chance of digging in. So I'm just gonna hit six chips here just to show you, and I wanna show you the ground. So hopefully you can see here, I'm not really moving anything here. It's a brush, it's a bruise. It's just a slight kind of brushing off the top layer of grass down by the ball or where the ball was. So let's think about some key triggers for your swing to get this nice neutral action and this nice neutral interaction with the ground. So once you've got your straight line set up at address, you haven't got the club too snug to the ball. I have that little inch space behind because I want to be hitting that ground slightly first, believe it or not, just making sure we're using that back of the club as we do it. Key features I want to happen is I don't want to lead with my lead hand. I don't want this dragging that handle forwards. I need to make sure my trail hand is letting that head overtake, catch up and overtake the grip end. So one of the key features that does that for me on the way through, and it'll work for you too, is just trying to let that right hand just push out towards the target and let the lead hand just hinge up. So we're gonna be hinging that lead wrist up, right hand, so your trail hand just hinging forwards towards the target. So it will feel a lot more what people would call flicky, which scares them at the start, but when they start seeing the strikes, they're happy to keep running with it. So let's get rid of this and think a little bit and letting that club just go out in front of us. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soften my arms, left and right arm, make sure they're nice and soft because I want the movement to be stemming from my body, my hips, turning back, turning through. So the more I get my lead and trail elbows relaxed and I almost connect them to the side almost the seams of my jumper here so right elbow left elbow just connecting with the seams of my jumper and then I feel if I turn and then I turn these aren't really getting involved your hands aren't getting involved with any kind of twists and turns that might get in the way and we get that nice neutral strike so soften those arms off let that right hand just flick forward up to target. Elbows into the seams of my jumper. Turn back, turn through. This is a great example of the strike. I caught the ground a good two inches before the ball there, but it's one of my best chips still because the interaction with the ground again was so unoffensive. And then the next thing I'd like to see you do, and this one is a game changer for so many golfers, me included with my chipping, is I'm gonna try and get my tummy button and my chest out in front of me but up so pointing more almost up just above the pin i'm going to extend my body as i turn through up this way this, what this does is it allows the handle of the club to come up and left which is great for shallowing out that impact zone i don't want that handle plowing down and forwards which is horrible for the old diggy dust that people tend to struggle with and nasty fins where they get that ball in the ground really late. So some extension on the way through. So if I just stick this out of my chest here, I'm turning on the way back, turning to impact, then trying to get up and through on the way through, not just turning and staying down, which I see loads of amateurs doing. Really get that tummy in your chest, pointing up and out to that target on the way through. Really get it going up and out to push that body turn, that slight extension as you come through with your body. Again, it's gonna get that handle moving up and away from the ground. Think about it. What happens with the handle is as this comes up and around, it pushes that club down 
and through. So don't worry, people think by pulling up they're going to fit it. You might get a few funny ones at the start, but once you get the coordination of it working, a little bit of release of your hands, connect those elbows to the seams of your shirt or your jumper, turn and turn, and just extend that body up. Lovely shots, good strikes from what is kind of average connections with the ground, but they're all coming out to a decent standard. So to finish, I'm just going to go to my 58 degree wedge here. And I want you just to play with this idea, but I want you to add a little bit of trajectory into this. We're going to do more specialized as we go. This is the basic start kind of series one, if you like. So 58 degree, I'm going to hit a medium shot. So medium height, ball all centered to everything we've just talked about straightening lines up, connecting elbows up, letting that right hand just flip forward, letting that club release, and just chest up to the sky, medium width stance. This is my medium, 58, chipping up to that flag. Next, I'm gonna go for a lower one. Same loft, obviously you can change loft and we'll come to that, but there are situations where you might use one loft, but you want to just try and change that trajectory slightly. So now I am pushing the ball just slightly back. It's now my middle of my zipper here is just slightly forward of the ball. So I've got a fraction amount of shaft lean, almost lining with the ball, but I am still gonna try and move up. I'm still gonna let that handle just release a little bit. We're just taking a little bit of loft off for that lower hit in there. Little bit more interaction with the ground on that one because as I push that ball back, we are then just changing some of the dynamics, but as long as I extend on the way through, it's not a crazy crash of the ground. And then the last one, I'm just gonna push this ball just a fraction, half an inch forward of my zipper, let that handle stay back, let the club really flip through, really extend my upper body. And there's my high one. Getting one or two lofts masters with a medium, a low and a high shot with this basic technique is going to give you some really good armory to get yourself out of lots of funky little situations. So medium rough over bunker, exactly the same technique, going to use my medium shot. Take it. So I've got a medium rough lie, short sided, green running away with slope. This is where I'm going to employ my high version. Stay left, oh, just take it. Again, medium rough lie, right to left, running away. This is where I might employ my low. Just let that slope try and feed it back somewhere. Get up, oh, a little short towards the hull. Some quick little chipping hacks just to finish. Now you've got your best basic technique and set up all in place. Got three wedges here, or two wedges and an eight iron. Use loft and learn to use some different loft. This is a green that runs away or very much uphill with a little bit of a tear in it. Nothing in front of me. Using the same technique, a little seven iron, eight iron run might be the answer. Again, unless you practice it, you're not gonna know. You need to be doing this basic technique with all your lofts. What we find, is amateur golfers tend to go with one loft and it's often their most lofted. This is my 58 degree. Now I feel I can play this shot and I reckon I can pull it off, but I feel like the eight iron is gonna be a safer option over and over and over a matter of times. Certainly if I practice it. Often the eight iron, seven iron run for golfers isn't their preferred option because they simply don't practice it enough. Making sure you're practicing these shots with different lofts is crucial to making sure you have enough armory to get out there and deal with slopes, deal with runaways, deal with all those ideas. So I've got six balls. This green is pitched back to front, big slopes. If you go past the hole here, you do have a tricky putt. But I want you to think about trying to leave, you'll hear commentators and you'll hear people say, try and chip the ball the correct side of the hole to leave yourself a better option on the next option. What I'm gonna do is chip these six balls as close as I can to the hole, just literally as close. I'm not gonna try and manipulate if I'm low or high of that hole. All right, six chips. Let's go and show you the outcome of them. Happy with all of them apart from one. 
So one of them here too far past, the others all nicely snug up to the hull, but on the short side, so this is the harder putt, coming downhill, these are the easier putts left going up the hill. Now, if I try to leave all of these short, so I'm now gonna try and leave these all, let's say, within this region here. So I've now moved them all. So we are in effect trying to leave them short side. This one has got a bit closer, but these have all got further away. So now I'm further away and have more chance of missing the next putt. Simply within reason, and I hear a lot of my students saying this at the minute, chip that ball as close as you can. Do not try and keep it below the hole or get it to the other side of the hole, those kind of things. Use brake, try and use brake left to right, so those kind of things, uphill hit them a bit harder, downhill they're gonna run out more. You need to use the brakes, but just try and chip the ball as close as you can. If you're, I mean, if you're good enough to leave them short side, but still in a position to hold apart, keep doing that. But if you look at the standard deviations of the world's best chippers, just chip the ball as close as you can. Because you're going to have, as you saw from this, deviation in all your shots. We're just not good enough to do it. It's one of those golf myths that get people in a lot of trouble. Thanks for watching. I'm having huge success with the chipping ideas with students and it's obviously transformed my game as well. Remember we've got the competition running so subscribe, like and hit that link down below to enter with today's golfer. Let me know if these help you. I'll be so keen to know because like I say they're really transforming my game. They can transform yours as well.